What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to be covering 10 particular fragrances that I went into completely blind, had never tested or sampled before. Some of these are designer fragrances. Some of these are niche fragrances. I could, actually, I think half of them are niche fragrances where I just went into them completely blind, assumed I would like them based off of seeing a note breakdown. And it turns out I more than just like them. I absolutely love these fragrances. I want to talk to you about them. So stay tuned. Starting with the most expensive blind buy in this video, if I, my memory serves me correctly, it's between this and, and one other fragrance, but this is from Mason Francis Kirkjohn. This is Aqua Celestia Forte. This is my favorite fresh green fragrance. Beautiful pedigree note, a little bit of lime, there's some mint. Very fresh green performance is solid. Obviously the quality is top tier, it's an MFK fragrance. This stuff is good. Oh man, I mean really good. I was lucky enough to be able to get a tester, so it came in a white tester box, so I did save a few dollars there. This is one of those 2.4 ounce 70 ml bottles that they are, they now have 30 ml bottles, which actually look pretty cool. I like the shape to them, but I'm glad I have 70 ml of this because 70 ml is going to go a long way for me because you don't need a lot of sprays for what I like to wear it for, uh, semi-casual, semi-formal situations in warmer weather. This is actually perfect to where I don't want to heavily spray it. Moderate spray range, five to seven sprays suits what I, you know, the attires and situations I wear it for perfectly. Like I said, I assumed I would like this one going into it. Uh, the note breakdown just looked so intriguing. And then when I got it and sprayed it for the first time, it was definitely love at first sniff. And then the more I wear it, the more I love it. I firmly stand behind this one. This is this was a risky blind buy, as any expensive fragrance is. But boy, it paid dividends for how much I like it. I've recommended this one many times. I've done a full review on this one. Super happy to have it. One of my favorite fragrances for the springtime. Aqua Celestia Forte from Mason Francis Kirkjohn. Next, I was able to secure this one for 35 bucks from Kingdom Fragrances uh, sometime last year at the recording of this video. And I like the original. I like a ton of the flankers in this line. But this is the ultimate when it comes to the Zorro Pour Homme. We're talking about a Zorro Pour Homme Intense. I talk about this one pretty often. We're starting, at least recently, because we're starting to move into the weather to where I want to wear this. <sighs> Bright, aromatic, spicy very warm and spicy and a little sweet and boozy performance is fantastic like i said i got this for around 35 dollars it outperforms that price point you know tenfold as well as the scent quality doesn't smell cheap and synthetic to me it has that timeless timeless classic dna of the original zorro pour Om, just kind of more modernized because of the booziness and then the spices here it's not more fresh and soft spicy like the original. It's very warm spicy because it's a hefty dose of cinnamon. It doesn't completely smell like a cinnamon bomb. The aromatics and the booze really kind of help balance out the scent profile, but it's deep, it's rich, it's mature and masculine without smelling like an old man. And it still maintains a little bit of playfulness because of the booziness to not make it too serious of a fragrance. It definitely dresses up and down, uh, dresses up better than it does dress down casually but you can wear it for whatever, long as the weather is on the cooler side, because this stuff cuts through the cold really well. One of those blind buys that I ended up falling in love with was a Zara Pour Homme Intense. Next, this is one that I purchased from Venba Fragrances at the same time that I purchased the Mason Francis Kirkjohn fragrance we discussed earlier, Aqua Celestia Forte. And this was my favorite fragrance of the haul. I had purchased four niche fragrances in this haul, and this has become my favorite vanilla fragrance hands down. We're talking about Nishanae's Ani. This big beautiful bottle was a complete blind buy and a complete success. I love it. It's so intoxicating. The best vanilla benzoin fragrance. Better than Grand Soir for me. And look, I love Grand Soir from Mason Francis Kirkjohn. This edges it out for me. I just, the spices to this, there's a little bit more complexity to this fragrance. Whereas Grand Soir is a little bit more simplistic, intoxicating, great amber amber benzoin, but this is more of a vanilla 
amber fragrance that with it still has some benzoin too if i remember correctly it provides kind of a boozy feel to benzoin um, but there's a nice warm spicy tone in the backdrop that doesn't make it very spicy it's it's more warm than it is spicy and that's due to the amber but this is such a beautiful fragrance performance is fantastic where i don't find it to be too loud of a projector but it has this magical sillage nice intoxicating trail that lingers when you walk by this is gorgeous and, and that's because of the oil concentration it's an extract de parfum uh, so i don't know the exact oil concentration but it is above 25 percent so it wears a little bit heavier doesn't project out quite as well in the first couple of hours but as it gets a little closer to the skin and the sillage kind of which you're going to maintain for the several hours of the life of the fragrance remaining it's pretty much a solid, stout, dense cloud that I do get random whiffs of. My wife absolutely loves this one. This is another one that was love at first sniff. Complete blind, blind buy, total risk. But when I saw the note breakdown, I just assumed this would be the one for me. You know, not 10 times out of every 10 niche fragrances that I blind buy do I absolutely love, but this is one of those instances where I was spot on with liking it, and then when I when I got my nose on it, I was like, holy crap, this is even better than I hoped for. Get your nose on this one. Try this one. If this is the first time you hear me talking about it, I hope this sparks you to get a sample and try it. Because this is one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. Nishane Ani. Next, this is one that I picked up from Kingdom Fragrances. Uh, every time he gets these Mason, Fr Mason Margiela replica fragrances, it's usually around 99 bucks, which is some of the best prices on the internet. And I knew I would like this because I love this style scent profile. Uh, I had heard from my buddy Justin of just how accurate of a barbershop type of atmosphere this aroma actually was. So at the Barbers, Mason Margiela replica line. This is so good. This is my favorite barbershop fragrance. You know, this is still a barbershop fragrance in its own right as well. Um, but this is more authentic barbershop. This is barbicide with everything soaking uh, right on side of the chair. This is aftershave. This is a smooth leather. This is spices from the aromatics. Spices and aromatics from the aftershave. This is shaving cream type of smell. This is a hot, wet rag on your face before the shave. This replicates all of that perfectly. The quality is on point. Performance is nothing spectacular, but it's not a weak fragrance. It's in that average to slightly above average range. Oh, man, this is just so appropriately authentic and masculine. This is such a great fragrance. I assumed I would love it. I really, really love it. This is one of this is my favorite barbershop style scent profile fragrance. The name is so fitting. It's replicating being at the barbers, and damn it, it's spot on. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been at a barbershop, but this definitely will take you there when you wear it. Dresses up, dresses down. This is signature scent every day, regardless of season. This is that fragrance. Blind by that definitely worked out for me that I love. Mason Margiela replica at the Barbers. I had scooped this one on eBay. I forgot which seller it was. I want to say it was One Perfumes, One Dash Perfumes. Uh, reputable seller, been on eBay for years that I buy from a lot of the times. I always assumed I would like this. I always heard it was a dry, spicy, tobacco style fragrance. Um, more on the unique side. And I got to say, I don't have another fragrance that smells like this. It's all that and then some with Amouage Journeyman. This is the other fragrance I was saying. I'm not sure which one I paid the most for in the video between this and the MFK. I don't remember exactly. They were both in the realm right under $200, but this stuff is special. This is an enthusiast fragrance if I've ever smelled one. Oh, man, bright, aromatic, and juicy. Then it starts to settle into a drier spice, earthy tobacco. It's a little smoky, dry, and grassy vetiver. This is, there's some woods here. I smell it still floating. God, it's so potent. This is such a great fragrance, guys. Absolutely worth a sample. I figured I'd really like this one, but damn, it's good. Damn, it's good. I go back and forth on my favorite homage all the time. It's typically the argument between Reflection Man and Epic Man, uh, which if those would have been blind buys, one of those would have had to be in here probably. But I had a decant of Reflection Man and of Epic Man before I ever bought bottles. So they did not qualify for the blind buy 
uh, video topic, but this one absolutely did. You can't go wrong with most of these armoires. I know not every single one of them is a hit. Some of them are just too much of a challenge to wear. Uh, I've heard horror stories about certain ones. I think Figment Man, for example, smells like wet dirt is what I was told. I think it's Figment Man. Shout out to Hunter, if you happen to see this. He's the one that told me that. And I believe him. I believe him. I've heard horror stories about certain ones. But boy, I'll tell you what. If you like spicy fragrances, you should really get your nose on this one. Tobacco fragrances, you should really get your nose on this one. It's unapologetically high quality. I mean, absurdly high quality. This stuff smells expensive. It's extremely masculine. It's on the drier side. It's classy, but not too serious at the same time. You can definitely pull this one off with a t-shirt. I have worn this with a t-shirt, but I'll tell you what, you pull up into a special event, a dinner, date, a get together with family or anything, this is gonna probably be a conversation starter because it's extremely potent. People are going to smell you and they more than likely have never smelled this fragrance before. So it's gonna intrigue someone. This stuff is so good. Definitely a blind buy, a risky blind buy that really worked out. I love this stuff. Amouage Journeyman. At the recording of this, this is still the newest fragrance in this line. Um, I purchased it the day it went for sale in the U.S. directly from the brand because I don't hesitate with this line and uh, it might be the best one in the line at this point uh, even though I've kind of rekindled my love for the original Spice Bomb Spice Bomb Infrared this is one of the best releases from last year if I can get it to focus that would just be stellar there we go it's one of the best releases from last year and it's such a great addition to this line because I hold this line in very high regard. It's no secret that I love spicy fragrances. This was, this and blue fragrances was were my go-to types of fragrances before I fell in love with Iris. <sighs> Red hot, spicy, a little sweet, very airy and aromatic. Even though it has the longevity of a heavier fragrance, it's got the sillage of a bright and airy fragrance. Very aromatic, like I said. This is beautiful. Beautiful fragrance. I assumed I would like it. That's why I blind buy at full retail the day they release. I did it with the previous release of Night Vision Eau de Parfum. And the next one they release, I'll do that again. Because I have faith in Victor and Rolf with this line. Because even Night Vision EDT, the least popular of all of them, I really like. This one, like I said, kind of rivals extreme and the original as the best of the line i really think this is such a damn good fragrance a great daily wear in cold weather but year round great evening date night scent even in the summer this is sneaky good for the summertime for going out to dinner because you're going to be in a climate co controlled environment more than likely this stuff's really good like i said i assumed i would really enjoy it that's why i blind buy it at full retail the day it releases but damn it I didn't think I'd like it more than the previous release, and I do, dare I say, I absolutely love this one. Get your nose on it. Go to anywhere that they sell Victor and Rolf fragrances, and they have a tester, and spray this on your skin and experience it. It's Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Infrared. Next is one that I just absolutely assumed I would enjoy, and as soon as I came across it in the rack store for 32 bucks, did not hesitate to scoop it up. Turns out, it's one of my favorite pickups of the year. We're talking about Masoni Wave. I have talked about this one plenty on this channel over the last few months because I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. It's in the running for my favorite pickup of the year. It's at minimum one of my three favorite pickups of the year. Um, this is going to remind you of Chanel Lorome Sport. It's going to remind you a little bit of Versace Pour Homme. It kind of takes the best of both worlds. While not as high a quality as the Chanel, it's definitely a... Pretty close to dead ringer for Allure Ohm Sport. Performance is slightly above average. Average to slightly above average on my skin. Absolute gorgeous smell. It's very creamy, aquatic. There's a little bit of citrus at the top. It's a little sweet. There's a vanilla orchid note in the dry down. It has a light woody base. It's a little bit on the soapy side from the, the lavender, but it's not heavily soapy. There's, like I said, some aquatic notes in here. There's a decent amount of things going on in the scent profile to give it not really a lot of complexity but a little bit of depth to where it's not just basic and smell like every other fresh light blue light blue fragrance this stuff's actually really really good and i advise you get your nose on this one as soon as you can if any of that sounds good to you this is definitely one that i had high hopes for ended up falling in love with because like i said it's in the running for my favorite pickup of the year 
I absolutely love this stuff for sure. Another successful blind buy was Masoni Wave. So I just happened to be on Kingdom Fragrance website one day and saw that they had this for 60 bucks. And I knew that was a really good price for it. It's a high quality niche citrus fragrance. And I was like, you know what, why not? I've never smelled it. Um, I have heard about it. I've seen a review from my buddy Chad at A Gentleman's Journey. He absolutely loved it. It turns out I absolutely love it too. We're talking about Aqua de Parma Colonia Pura. I just did a full review on this one not that long ago at the recording of this video. Authentic citrus, light florals. It has this minty green fresh tone without any minty notes. There's ozonic notes that really provide this bright, almost aquatic type of freshness. It makes the citrus very mouthwatering. It's a little zesty in the top. Oh, this is so good. Authentic, authentic, wonderful, clean, well put together. Not a great performer, but not a super wheat fragrance. Even for being a citrus dominant, fresh eau de cologne, this stuff will stick to your skin. The quality here is second to none when it comes to fresh fragrances. It's so good, guys. It's absolutely worth sampling. I haven't tried all of the different Colonia fragrances, but everything I try, I end up really liking. Aqua de Parma does a fantastic job. Like I said, I blind bought, bought this assuming I would like it. It seemed like something I would like. I liked what I heard about it. The note breakdown looked promising. It's even better than I anticipated. From the first spray, I really liked it. Started wearing it, fell in love. Beautiful, one of the best fragrances I picked up in the warm weather this year. Hands down. One of my best pickups of the year. Love this fragrance. You should absolutely get your nose on this one if you haven't yet. Anytime you've heard anybody hype it up, I think it's justified because it's that damn good. Aqua de Parma Colonia Pura. So this is a brand new release for this year, and I really liked last year's release of the original so much. We're talking about Ralph's Club, but here it's Ralph's Club Parfum. I did go ahead and blind buy this one from Ulta as soon as it released. Retails 140 on the 100 ml. Now, if you're the type that's looking for a lot of projection, this, this isn't going to be the fragrance for you, at least on my skin. Does not project real heavy. After an hour, starts to sit closer. It does what a lot of other designer parfums do on my skin. I think of fragrances like Blue de Chanel Parfum. I think of fragrances like Polo Blue Parfum and so on, where they stick to my skin. They smell very thick and rich, clean, well put together, polished versions of the previous concentrations of the fragrance. This does exactly that. Adds some spice, a little bit of a smoky nuance to it. It's much deeper and richer. It sticks to the skin. It has a moderate to mild sillage to where you will get nice little whiffs of it. It will linger because of the oil concentration, but like I said, projection's not heavy. I assumed I would like this. That's why I went ahead and blind bought it as soon as it released. You know, I was really excited when it got announced because I really like the original and usually the Parfum Flankers are my favorite in the line. That's the case here. If you're looking for more projection and freshness, go with the original Ralph's Club. But if you're looking for the longevity and the depth, the deeper scent, this is better. This is better. At first, I wasn't sure if it was better, but as I've spent more time with it, I'm actually going to be wearing it this week at the recording of this video. It'll be in my rotation. This is really, really good. Really good. Is it worth 140 bucks? I f I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I didn't feel the need to wait. I wanted it right away. I would advise you to get out and smell it for yourself. Try it on your skin because 140 is a lot of money. And you may deem it not worth that. Or you may have to pull the trigger right away and don't want to wait for it to slowly get to discounters because I damn sure didn't want to wait. And I'm glad I didn't wait because I've really been enjoying this one. I love this blind buy. Ralph's Club Parfum from Ralph Lauren. Last but not least, this was the most random of my blind buys. I picked this up from FragranceNet. Um, I had never really heard anything about it. I saw the bottle. I looked up the notes. It seemed promising. I said, why the hell not? I think it was around 50 bucks for Mercedes-Benz Sign. I ended up doing a full review of this one. I hate the button. It's a little gimmicky. I always three use three fingers to balance for pressing the button. See? But it smells like a combination of Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultra Male and Spice Bomb Night Vision. I ended up really liking this. I kind of like it more than both of the fragrances I mentioned that it smells like a combination of. Um, this isn't as screechy 
and sharp and synthetic as ultra male. I wouldn't sit here and call it way, you know, a much higher quality or anything like that, but it also has more character to it and and more enjoyment in the scent profile overall because of the added sweetness over Night Vision Eau de Toilette. Performance is above average, not a beast, but really good stuff. The sillage on this one, I can smell it all throughout the life of the fragrance without it being too strong. This stuff's really good. I've worn it during the day in the summertime even, and this is a sweet and spicy fragrance. Like I said, similar to Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultra Male. Little much for the warm weather. Uh, luckily, I'm not in high humidity, but I'll tell you what, evenings, this fragrance is fantastic, and cooler weather that we're starting to move into, it's gonna be ideal for. I'm gonna be wearing this one even more now. I wore it about a handful of times in the summer because once I got it, I enjoyed it so much, I wanted to start spraying it as often as I could, because uh, I, I do like a lot of variety in my rotations. But this was a complete blind buy. I hadn't heard anybody talk about it. It was the first time I, I just happened to type in Mercedes. There's just certain brands. I see what they have going on when I'm online shopping. And I was like, you know what? Why the hell not? Let's roll the dice on it. Maybe a great find. Maybe it's just mediocre. I went into it not knowing what to expect. Turns out I love this stuff. This is a hidden gem that not really anybody's talking about that's worth trying if you like fragrances like Ultra Male and Spice Bomb Night Vision. If you don't like those, you won't like this because it's very similar to both, but it's really good stuff. I ended up loving this one. It was a great blind buy on my part. It's a Mercedes-Benz sign. Well, that's just 10 of my more recent blind buys that I ended up really loving. I assumed I would like them, at least like them a little bit, or just they would be pretty good for the most part. I just assumed that with all of these. That's why I rolled the dice on blind buys and turns out absolutely love them. Um, obviously these aren't the only 10, but these are the main 10 that came to mind when I thought about this video topic. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What's some blind buys that you just ended up absolutely loving? You had certain expectations for, and then when you got it, whether it was from the first spray or the first couple of wearings, it ended up far exceeding your expectations. That's what these 10 in this video topic was all about. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And until next time, I will say if you get any of the 10 that I blind bought and absolutely love and you give them a spray now, really confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.